Today I want to break down my secrets for how I fix my pectus through exercise without surgery, okay? And this is going to be my most comprehensive video ever. I'm going to run you through step by step exactly how I did it. My secrets. Like, you guys have probably seen my results. You've seen my clients' results. And now, I want you to get yours. Just quickly before we get into this, I just want to, in case you don't know, explain who I am so you have some understanding as to why I'm preaching to you about how to fix pectus through exercise. My name is Riley Byrne. I'm the world's only pectus excavator specialized personal trainer and this has been my life for the last five years. Thousands of clients later, thousands of videos later, and here we are. So. That's who I am. Uh, I was born with pectus, obviously, and I managed to fix it. So if you see on this slide here, age 12, you can really see my pectus. You can see my rib flare. The rib flare used to annoy me more than the actual indent, which I know is quite common with a lot of people with pectus. Um, and you can see both the indent and the rib flare. I don't have any photos of me when I was younger because I would never take off my shirt, <laughs> as I'm sure most of you can relate. Um, so that was me just before a swimming race. So mom managed to snap that. I remember when she took it, I was like, mom, I'll take a photo showing my pectus. Lucky now, because now people can see just how bad my pectus was. Um, age 14, you can see I was super lanky, very common with pectus. Pectus is actually commonly associated with Marfan's syndrome, which is like really long limbs, and that's why a lot of people with pectus are ectomorphic. So a primary goal of my training is putting on size, and, and it can be hard for people with pectus to put on size because of that Marfan's ectomorphic kind of correlation. And then now you can start to see some photos of when I started training and building confidence at 18, 19, and 20. 20 was actually by the time I'd released my first video um, and started coaching people with pectus and I'd made my pectus look a lot better. 19, I was doing topless photo shoots, which I never thought I would do with pectus. And that brings me to the present day now, um, where I'm so happy with my physique. I'd I mean, I'd say I'm quite muscular. I've made my pectus a lot less noticeable. Like that's how I, I fix my pectus. It doesn't get me down anymore. I've built my pecs. You know, if anything, I'd say having that slight indentation actually makes my pecs and my physique look better. I've developed abs and I only have like a whole like pot belly and flaring of the belly and the ribs, but rather just like abs, pecs, straight posture and my pectus is hardly noticeable. So much so that it doesn't get me down. Like I fix my pectus, you know, like pectus isn't a thing for me. So that's where I want you guys to get to. I want you guys to get to that point where you're so confident in your body, you like the way you look because that, at the end of the day, that's what pectus does. It gets you down and makes you not like the way you look. And so I want to change that and I want you guys to have confidence in your body, have some confidence to take off your shirt, you know, and uh, be proud of who you are and the body you have. And that is life changing. So honestly, I'm so happy that I joined the gym and dedicated so many years of my life to figuring out how to do this. And um, now it's just so exciting that my life purpose is coaching you guys with pectus to achieve the same result. But anyway, I don't want to waste any time. I want to just get straight into this now that you've heard my story. You probably trust who I am. If you didn't know who I am, you're going to trust what I say because, I mean, I had it and I've overcome it. So it's time for you to do the same. Firstly, I just wanted to show you some other cases of pectus so you can see some of my clients and, and then maybe relate to some of them and maybe get more motivated to actually apply the steps I'm about to teach you because you really, it, it, it does require a level of commitment, okay? And so I, I want you to have high motivation and see that you actually can get these results, you know? So first, let's talk about Thor. As you can see, he does have a bit of that pot belly that I talk about with pectus and the whole rib flare, which really made his pectus look worse. As soon as we got some abs, got that six pack cranking, developed the lean muscular physique, Dor's pectus became hardly noticeable and Dor was so happy with his life. He said, that signing up with me was life changing. And so as you can see, like he had quite a severe case of pectus and he's made it look so amazing. So I'm super proud of Dor and I'm super happy he's now able to live his life without the burden of pectus anymore. All right, now we go on to Jake. I mean, just look at his after photo, so jacked. And he's actually continued to get even more jacked after that photo. Like that just goes to show how much muscle you can build with pectus, how amazing you can look with pectus. In one of Jake's videos, he says, you can look amazing with pectus with the testimony video he shot for me. And you can, like look at him. <laughs> so it's just cool to just show just the kind of physique you can really develop. All right, now we have Mike. As you can see with Mike, Mike's actually older. He's in like his mid forties. I have a lot of people reach out to me that are around that age and say, is it too late? And no, Mike is an inspiration to show you that you can start even if you are older. And Mike also is an inspiration to show just how much recomping helps. So as you can see, he's actually lost some fat at the same time building muscle. A lot of people with pectus do have that fat to lose in the pot belly, but then at the same time, we really want to build some muscle too. And Mike's an example of recomping and just, he's an example of how much you can make your pectus look better. Like, I mean, look at his transformation. He's, it's amazing. So 
stoked. So yeah, they're just some other people's results with training. So you can see that it's not just me, like it does work for other people. I mean, and just look at all my testimonials. Like I've, I've literally have hundreds of testimonials of people who've transformed their body. So you can do it. Let's teach you how. Firstly, I want to talk about the mistakes that most people are making when they're training for pectus. And sometimes it makes their pectus worse, okay? So, firstly, training chest too much, okay? I'll talk about this later in the video, but basically, people with pectus have tight chest muscles already. And this pulls us into a rounded forward kyphotic posture, which is very common with pectus. And this posture makes your pectus worse. So when you train chest too much and not enough back, it's actually going to accentuate that postural deformity and make your indent look worse. So we definitely don't want to train chest too much. It's normally the first thing everyone pectus does is train chest. And it's probably the worst thing you can do if you're not balancing that out with stretching and back. So we're training chest too much, okay? That's a big thing that a lot of people do. The next mistake most people make is not following a set program. They're just going in and doing random workouts, you know, hoping for the best. Random workouts produce random results. You want a set program. You want structured training with progressions and periodization, okay? That's how you get results. It's tried and proven, you know? I wish I knew what I know now back then when I started and I started doing random workouts and I got random results. Then when I started really learning the art of training, you know, proper program design, progressive overload, structured program, compound movements, pectus specialized movements. I transformed and that's how all my clients have gotten results so quick. So not following a set program is a huge mistake a lot of people do, just doing random workouts. The next mistake most people do is not stretching. You don't want to do that. As I talked about before, if you don't stretch, you're just going to make your posture worse and it's going to make your pectus worse. So we really need to be following a stretching routine. All right, the next mistake most people make is not eating properly. A lot of people do the workouts, but they don't follow a proper nutrition plan. Eating is half the battle. You need to eat a high protein diet. You need to eat the appropriate amount of calories for your goals. You need, can't build muscle without adequate nutrition. So not eating properly is a huge mistake a lot of people are making. And last and the biggest mistake most people are making, and I'd say you might be making it, is not starting. Most people don't start, or they do start, then they stop, then they start, then they stop. You need to commit. The best time to start was yesterday, the next best time to start is now. So that's a huge mistake most people are making. So that's all the things that people are doing wrong. Now let's go in, how do we actually exercise to fix pectus? How does this work? So the step one, as I touched on earlier, is fixing your posture. So as you can see in this diagram, pectus posture, it looks pretty bad, okay? And it's actually pretty common. I bet you if you took a profile photo, you would find that you have either definitely the rounded shoulders or an anterior pelvic tilt more than likely as well, and they're actually accentuating your condition. So that is why we need to fix that. As soon as we fix that, it's gonna make your condition look a lot better. Imagine those rounded shoulders straightening up, pushing your chest out, yeah? If you have the anterior pelvic tilt, that's pushing your pot belly and your rib flare. So we really want nice, straight posture, okay? And we do that by training your back and stretching your chest. On this slide are some example stretches. As I said, I wanted this to be actionable for you. So here are some example stretches that I give to my clients. So I want you to do this routine, practice it. Do it after this webinar, see how it makes you feel, okay? We've got the wall chest stretch. I want you to hold that 20 seconds each side, three sets in total, so it'll be a minute each side, okay? I want you to hold a Superman for three by max holds. Try and get like 20 seconds if you can. Oh, the wall slides, if you can do some wall slides, do like three sets of 10, keep trying to keep your back, elbows, and wrists all on the wall, or as close to that as possible. More than likely, you won't be able to do it because you more than likely have pectus posture. So get as close as you can, even if your hands touch and your wrists aren't, but keep your back nice and straight. Don't let your back flare out, okay? And do three sets of 10 of them. And then lastly, if you have a resistance band, do some band pull aparts. Okay, again, three sets of 10 of them. If you can structure all of that into a little regime, okay, every morning, that's gonna start doing you wonders for making your chest looser and your posture better. Okay, so that was step one, fixing posture. Now we're up to step two, which is muscular development. This is the fun part. So the first element of muscular development is developing the pecs, okay? I know I talked about not training chest too much, but at the end of the day, that is a big key of fixing pectus. We just want to do it right. We don't want to do too much and not enough back and stretching, but we do definitely want to be training our pecs. That is key. We want to be developing muscles in and around the pectus, you know, in a lower pecs. We want those lower pecs to pop so it makes the rib flare less prominent by getting that definition. We want big muscular pecs right in and around pectus, okay? That is so important. As you can see in this image here of me doing those pec flies, great movement, program that for all my clients. So developing the pecs is definitely a very important thing that we need to be doing for pectus. 
And then we need to also develop the back, obviously, okay? We need to be doing just as much back as pecs. This is for the posture, okay? So we want to develop the back. Very, very important. Rows, pull downs, chin ups, okay? All of those different movements are very effective and we want to be aiming for progressive overload on them. And we also want to develop the abs and the obliques. Now, these are the three key muscles, chest, back, abs, and obliques, okay? Abs and obliques is really important for the rib flare and the pot belly. Developing the obliques particularly, I think, is very, very key. As you can see in my image, I've really developed my obliques. And then lastly, in regards to muscular development, we just generally want an overall lean muscular physique. A lot of people ask me when they're signing up, they say, am I just gonna be training pectus key muscles? And the answer is no. The workout regime will target your entire body. We're not gonna neglect your legs or your shoulders or anything, because in general, we want a lean muscular physique. We want a physique that is just impressive, that people get like, you know, distracted by your physique and don't look at their pectus. They're just like, wow, this person looks amazing. We don't want to create imbalances by not training a muscle or anything. So in general, we just want a lean muscular physique. And also I want to touch on the word lean. I've got it in capitals here. We want lean muscular physique because when we're like a big mass monster, it actually makes the pectus look worse. It makes the pot belly accentuated again. And the indent actually maybe even appear too deep if you get too much muscle, okay? So we want that lean muscular physique. We want that definition, the striations, the muscles in and around the indent, the abs, the obliques, everything to pop. Okay? Okay, when you're lean, your muscles pop. So that's really important. I can't stress how important being lean is. So now I want to talk about the eight training keys. So when we're actually training, some really important elements to know to make sure you are getting optimal progress. The first element is progressive overload. Okay, so when we're training, what we need to be doing is tracking the weight we lift or the reps we perform. So we're ensuring that we're getting stronger. If you can get stronger in your movements, then more than likely you're going to build muscle. If you pair your training with proper nutrition, if you're progressively overloading, you will get bigger. Okay, so it's really important to track your lifts. I give all my my clients a spreadsheet so they can track their workouts okay because if you don't know what you lifted last week then you don't really know what to aim for okay and by tracking it you can actually understand okay yeah yeah last week I dumbbell pressed 14 kilos for three sets of 10 this week I'm gonna try and do 14 kilos for three sets of 12 or this week I'm trying gonna try and do like 16 kilos and that is the art of getting bigger okay there is a big correlation between strength and muscle size so progressive overload is very important when it comes to training the next major key is compound movements, okay? So compound movements are multi-joint movements which basically enable you to lift heavier weights. Compound movements are things like the bench press, the squat, the deadlift, okay? They're very important movements that you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck than just doing isolation movements the whole time. So compound movements and specifically progressive overload, getting stronger, like getting stronger on your bench press, that's, some, that's a really key for building a good muscular physique. So we definitely want a lot of compound movements. You're gonna get so much more bang for your buck from, from doing them. Like for example, the bench press, not only are you going to work your chest, but you're also going to work your triceps, your shoulders, you know, a deadlift basically works your entire posterior chain, which is very important for posture when it comes to pectus. So we definitely want to be doing compound movements. The next key is intensity. So intensity basically refers to how hard you're training, like, ah, okay. And I govern intensity in my programming through something called an RPE, rate of perceived exhaustion. But basically with intensity, you may think we wanna be training crazy every time, but actually we don't because that may lead to injury, improper technique, you know, lack of actual muscular recruitment, uh, CNS fatigue, different things. So we actually wanna be dialing our intensity effectively in like an RPE range of like six to eight at the start. And depending on the movement, compound movement, movements require a lower intensity because they're more technical but isolation movements like a bicep curl where there's not much risk of injury we can we can up the intensity okay so intensity is definitely something to pay attention to and i'd say in actually more cases than not most people are actually under training okay a lot of people think that they're training a failure but they're actually not okay like i don't want you to be scared about thinking, oh, I can't train hard because training hard is very important. And I think a lot of people think they're training hard, but they're not really. So that's something that gets you need to dial in is your intensity, choosing the appropriate RPE for the appropriate exercise. All right, now number four is pectus specialized exercises. This is very important as well. I mean, a lot of people with pectus have been training and they don't see the results. And I'd say a big reason is they're not doing these movements such as the landmine press, you know, the low one arm dumbbell fly, the cross grip press. Some, most of my pectus specific exercises are movements that actually target the inner chest muscle fibers right in and around the indent, okay? And that's very important for developing. I remember when I joined the gym, I just did that all the time. And I think it's really key. So I program it a lot for my clients. 
Uh, the next thing is proper form and full range of motion. It's so, so important, okay? If you do a dumbbell press and you only do half rep, you're not gonna get any gains compared to a full range of motion all the way down, getting that stretch, really recruiting that muscle, increasing the time under tension, and then coming back up, okay? So we want full range of motion for optimally stimulating the muscle. And we want proper form, one, for optimally stimulating the muscle, and two, to avoid injury. If you get injured, that's a huge setback and we don't want injury. All right, number six is mind to muscle connection. This is actually really important as well, especially on isolation movements. For example, let's say one of my favorite pectus movements, the plate squeeze and press, okay? You can do this movement without a mind to muscle connection and you won't feel anything. All of a sudden, if you squeeze, you guys should try it. Just get like two 2.5 kilo plates, okay? And just go like this out in front. You won't feel anything. Go like that, keep your elbows tight, engage your pecs, squeeze your pecs, Squeeze them the whole time as you're pressing. I can feel that just with my body weight, okay? And that mind to muscle connection is actually recruiting the chest and you're gonna get so much more muscle growth from it. So mind to muscle connection is super important. All right, number seven is time under tension. So time under tension basically refers to the time that a muscle is under load. Now, if, someone, if you're someone without proper form and you're rushing through your reps, the amount of tension that that muscle sees for like, let's say three sets of 10 of bench press, for example, the standard, okay? Three sets of 10 bench press. If you, if you do your bench press like this, you might have nine, 10 seconds, like a rep a second, nine, 10 seconds of stimulus on the muscle. If you do it with a nice, slow, eccentric, really controlling it, thinking about the pecs and blowing back up, nice, and slow and control on the way down, back up. You know, you might have a 20 to 30 second set. That's a lot more time that that muscle is under tension. Therefore, you're gonna be making more muscle damage and therefore more muscle growth when you pair it with the right nutrition, etc. after the training. And lastly, Number eight, consistency. Dropping off a program, stopping, you know, on, in and out. That is the biggest reason why most of you are not seeing the results. So consistency is important. Start and dedicate yourself to it. Hold yourself accountable and don't quit. And so now just to finish off training for pectus, I wanted to talk about swimming for pectus. So I also program cardio for my clients, typically in the form of LIS, which is low intensity, steady state. So it's actually gonna help your recovery from the weight training. And my number one form of cardio that I recommend is swimming. Swimming is so great for pectus, okay? You're actually gonna be working your muscles when you're swimming and primarily muscles that really relate to your posture okay your back your external rotators these muscles when developed they're going to pull you into better postural alignment so one you're going to be working on your posture two you're actually going to be creating some mus muscular stimulus to therefore elicit some muscular growth and three you're getting used to taking off your shirt you're building that confidence it's not only just about transforming your body it's about transforming your mind because fixing pectus is when you no longer let it get you down okay you can have an amazing physique and it still gets you down so swimming for pectus is going to get you used to taking off your shirt and four it's just a great way to burn calories with no impact okay unlike running which is going to like hurt your knees and then may compromise your leg session swimming is like low impact so it's amazing it's an amazing form of cardio so that's something i definitely recommend all of my clients is swimming now i just wanted to talk about nutrition with you guys um this is very important okay if you want to develop a lean muscular physique you need to be applying yourself to nutrition okay so as you can see here this is the pyramid of nutrition and we've got energy balance macronutrients micronutrients meal timing supplements and this is the order of importance so starting off with energy balance this is the most important thing of nutrition i'm going to keep this really short and summarize so so it because this could go on forever talking about nutrition. It's very in depth, but basically the most important thing to know is energy balance is the most important thing. Energy is represented as a calorie, okay? And, and, and that is energy we burn and also energy we consume for food. So you've probably heard that foods have X amount of calories. That's the amount of energy they have, okay? If you're wanting to gain weight, you need to eat more energy than you burn. You need to eat more calories than you burn. If you want to lose weight, then you need to burn more calories than you eat. This is so important. All my, all my clients, when they sign up, they get given a formula to calculate the amount of energy they burn and then a formula to calculate how much energy they need to be eating dependent on their goals, okay? So this is really, really, really important and it's something you need to figure out how many calories you need to be eating and then you need to track your calories which all my clients get is a tutorial on how to track their calories using my fitness pal and make sure you're eating the right amount of calories this brings me to step number two which is macronutrients basically macronutrients are what makes up calories okay so protein and carbs have four calories per gram fat has nine essentially macronutrients are also very important for building muscle and if i'm just going to summarize this the one thing i'd say is you need to be eating a lot of protein protein is the building blocks of your muscles um, when all my clients sign up they get access to a nutrition pdf and i educate them exactly on what each macronutrient is and what they do and what food sources are high for example protein's high in like meat it's high in tofu protein powder obviously 
eggs, all those things. Foods that are high in carbs, it's like your potatoes, your rice, your grains, fruits. Foods that are high in fats, it's like your avocados, your nuts, and some meats. Um, and so I educate all my clients on, on what foods are high in what, so then they can structure a meal plan based on that. I also give them meal suggestions and meal guides. And then we go into micronutrients, which is basically like vitamins and minerals. Now, this is very important actually, being healthy, okay? If you're not healthy, then your body's not gonna transform properly because it's gotta work on being healthy before it can work on being more muscular, okay? So we really wanna be healthy. It's gonna help with your recovery. It's gonna help with your training. It's gonna help with your muscular growth. So basically, to summarize micronutrients, eat a lot of vegetables, eat all the colors. That's the most important thing. Then we go into meal timing, okay? So, the biggest thing I'd want you to know about meal timing is carbs are the body's preferred energy source, so it's pretty appropriate to have your carbohydrates around your training, and also having protein around training, and not having fats, because fats digest slowly. That's the most important thing to know about meal timing, um, but as long as you get energy balanced macronutrients and micronutrients right, you should be pretty sweet. And then lastly, supplements. There's the cherry on top. They're not critical, but they can help you hit your protein intake, which is a very, my biggest supplement is protein powder. I have like two scoops a day. Um, and then also like zinc and magnesium can be good and supplementing some multivitamins and creatine um, that can just help with your training. So yeah, guys, that is everything I know, all my secrets summarized as quickly and efficiently as I think I could possibly do. I didn't want to blab on too long, bore you, you know, I wanted to keep it short and concise, but hopefully you've really got some good dot points of what is important and what you need to be doing. If you are still feeling like you need some help, then I've got a good offer for you. Normally a call with me to ask me all the questions you want is 50 US and right now you can book it for free and we can talk about your training and how we can really get you those next level results. So if you are wanting to transform your body, fix your pectus, then book a call with me. Link will be down below and let's get this going. Let's get your transformation started. As I said before, the best time to start was yesterday. The next best time to start is now. So let's do it. What's holding you back? Anyway, I'm excited to meet you. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video and I'll talk to you soon.